Hi guys, I'm Clinton from ABC Kings, and ABC Kings is a SAMHSA accredited third party auditor, and we audit shippers across South Africa for SOLUS Method 2 requirements. There's nothing more frustrating than another seemingly pointless law or regulation that you don't understand but have to comply with. In this video, we want to give you an understanding of SOLUS and its importance. When an airplane crashes, it's big news, and everyone knows about it, but we rarely hear about the incidents at sea. SAMHSA the South African Maritime Safety Authority has a frame in their office that shows all the incidents that occurred from 1946 to 1984. All those dots in the map are casualties. It's quite shocking to see how many incidents we never hear about. I read an article recently that said that 94 vessels were lost in 2013 alone. So what is SOLUS? It stands for Safety of Life at Sea and the first version was passed in 1914 after the Titanic sank and covered issues such as as the number of lifeboats, safety equipment, etc., and has now expanded to include cargo as well. SOLUS is about people and it ensures that those that work on these vessels work in a safe environment and get to go home to their families. And that's something that we all can relate to. Did you know that one in three containers have misdeclared mass? So what's the big deal with declaring the correct mass? A common misconception is that the issue is under declaring the container weight. So shippers assume that as long as they add some fat to their declaration then they are covered. This is not the case. There's a difference between mass and weight. Mass is how many kgs is the object? How many pounds is the object? Right? Weight is its kgs or its pounds plus the effect of gravity on it. Check out this video of an experiment carried out by astronauts on the moon. Well, in my left hand I have a, a feather. In my right hand a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our Falcon, and I'll uh, drop the two of them here, and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Uh, Mark, that proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. Now you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with me shipping a container? Well, gravitational forces vary at different parts of the vessel. This means that a container with a fixed mass its weight will change depending on its positioning on the vessel because the gravitational forces will, will differ. So a container at the bow is going to be different to a container at the stern and so forth, stuff like that. Hence we have to declare the correct mass of the container. And here's a few examples of, of the consequences of unverified gross mass. You can see a lot of damage can take place. Apart from the fact that it's a safety hazard, right? And there are people involved. We also have to consider who's going to pay for all the damage. The equipment damage and a whole range of other issues that actually take place and someone needs to be held responsible for it. Now, let's get down to business. Who is responsible for VGM? Passing the buck was a major issue because the shipper blames the, the agent, the agent blames the packer, the packer blames the transporter and so forth. No one wants to take responsibility when the you-know-what hits the fan. According to Solus, the shipper stated on the master bill of lading carries sole responsibility for the verified gross mass. Shippers can outsource a function to a third party, but they cannot outsource their responsibility. Now, as a shipper, you need to review your current shipping procedures against the new rules and make the necessary adjustments to comply. There are two methods to determine the verified gross mass. The first method is through the way bridge and is referred to as method one and for method one it, it's not under SAMHSA's jurisdiction but I'll try to give you some feedback that we've had from from speaking to shippers apparently there are two methods of doing this the first method is you take the container right empty you take it to the way bridge you weigh the container on the truck and you get your slip you go and you pack the container you go back to the way bridge weigh it again you subtract the two weights, right? And that's going to give you the, the weight of your cargo. 
and then you're going to add in the tear weight that's on the container and that's how you get your verified gross mass. Now the problem with this is you're going to incur routing costs, you're going to have problems with standing time with your transporter, you have to use the same truck both ways. It seems to be very cumbersome and I I don't know if it's really working that well for people. The other option apparently is they they go to the weigh bridge where they packed container and they take the container off the truck and put it on the weigh bridge. And in doing so, they they get the, the verified gross mass. But the issue with this is now, apart from the routing cost and standing time, you're also going to incur a lift on, lift on cost as well. So that's basically what the guys are doing for method one. And finding a weigh bridge is an an issue unto itself. Most shippers are opting for method two, which requires that the cargo, the dunnage, and anything else that is placed inside the container to be weighed and added up with the tear weight that you get the verified gross mass. We found that, that even shippers with their own weigh bridges prefer this option as it avoids backlog within their premises. Method two requires certification from a SAMHSA third party auditor, which is what we do at ABC Kings. So. How does the accreditation process work? Well, basically, you contact us and you fill in the application form. And then once you do that, then we do a desktop audit. And the desktop audit will be looking at your procedures to see that your procedures is going to meet the requirements for Solus. Thereafter, we do an inspection to ensure that what's in your procedures is exactly what you guys are actually doing. Right? And then once that's done and you pass the audit, then we give you the SAMHSA number. And, and that's basically how you get accredited. The next big question that we get asked is, how is SAMHSA going to enforce SOLUS? And they will do so through inspections, through the audit process, and reports from third parties. Now, what happens if you get caught? Well, anyone that commits an offense in terms of these regulations will be liable to a fine or up to 12 months imprisonment once convicted. Method one, is considered a fallback method to method two. If we have to suspend or revoke your accreditation due to a misdeclared VGM, then you can use method one, which is the weigh bridge to determine the verified gross mass. Thank you for watching. We're here to help you. So if you need to call us regarding exports out of South Africa, please feel free to do so, or you can email us. We look forward to assisting you.